God bless you, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to our Facebook audience as well as to our in-house members here at the Miracle House of Prayer. Amen. You all look wonderful to me today. I know this is Palm Sunday, but amen, you all look wonderful to me. Amen. We're looking forward to great things on today. We welcome, amen, our Facebook audience. Amen. Thank you for your wonderful, awesome support. We uh, at the Miracle House of Prayer last Sunday was our 100 Facebook service on last Sunday. Oh, look at God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we are just grateful. And today, of course, being Palm Sunday, and that means this is our 101st Facebook service. Amen. We had some uh, on teleconference prior to Facebook. Amen. But we are looking to even go higher in the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are looking to the hills from which our help coming, for our help coming from the Lord uh, which made uh, heaven and earth. And now precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Lord we thank you Lord God for this opportunity to come before your people on today. Lord, uh, we are looking to go higher in you. We are looking to say hallelujah in your name. We are looking to say glory to God uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we praise you. We lift you up. Lord, we pray for all our three families, Lord God, even on today. today. Lord, we pray especially for the Robinson family, Taliba and Deontay. We pray especially for the Alfreda Jackson family, all of her children and her family. We pray for them. Lord, because we know you as a burden bearer and a heaven of sharer. Thank you, Lord, for being God in the midst of these two homegoings. We give you the glory and we give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. And let the people of God say amen. Amen. If you don't mind standing with me for the opening uh, scriptures, amen, in the book of St. John, we're going to go to the 19th verse and we're going to begin reading at the 37th verse, and if you would uh, read, if you would repeat after me, St. John 37, uh, St. John 19, 37 through 42. And again, and again another scripture said, they shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. And he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pound weight. Then, then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with spices 
as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. Our last verse before the second verse. Then laid they Jesus. Therefore, because of the Jews, preparation day for the sepulchre was not at hand. Look at somebody while you're standing there and I tell them that they laid him there. He stayed there three nights but on the third day morning he got up oh come on he got up he got up with all
call on the 800 number or write us a letter at the P.O. Box number 681-973, Houston, Texas, 77268. In other words, connect with us any way that you can. And we will pray with you. And we will add you to our role. And when uh, all of the members begin to come back, amen, together, we will believe in the Lord for a miracle for you that you will be able to join us in person. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for all, uh, amen, that you are doing for the Miracle House of Prayer. We don't take it for granted. We would like to say, keep on being a blessing to us. The Miracle House of Prayer. Yes, we yet have needs to be met. Because no matter how many are here, we are yet here with the doors open, with the electricity on, with the air conditioning on. Now that the cold air has seemed to move out, so now the application is working also. So we thank you so much. Our cash app here at the Miracle House of Prayer is dollar sign M-H-P-T-C. Amen. And I'll say that again somewhere later in the service to make sure that you write it down that amen. You will have our cash app. And you can also mail order right here. Amen. You can either use our physical address, Miracle House of Prayer, 604 East 38th Street, Houston, Texas, 77022. Or you're welcome to write to our mailbox, our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 268. Amen. Houston, Texas. Amen. God bless you. P.O. Box 681. 973 Houston, Texas, amen. 77268. Amen. All right. At this time, we love the Lord. We love each and every one of you. Amen. Keep holding us up in prayer. Amen. And at this time, receive our minister of music. Amen. As our young people minister to us in music at this time, Minister Bernard, welcome. Amen. God bless you.
would be the king of the Jews. Yeah. Praise God. In um, this verse, we see, just in this one verse, we see that Jesus in Matthew, he is a lovely, lowly servant. Mm -hmm. In Luke, when you study the book of Luke, he is just. In John, and all of these are the Gospels, he is God, therefore having salvation. Praise God. He is the Prince of Peace. And that's in the book of John. Behold, your king comes unto you, refers to Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the fall of an ass. And we'll be saying that because that's what the Bible says. On the first day of the week in which he was crucified. Think on this week. This is the first day of the week, Palm Sunday, in which he was crucified. This is the week of Jesus Christ. We call this Holy Week, hallelujah. We should think of what Jesus did for us, yeah. for each of us. Yeah. We should think this week of what the Lord, our Savior, did. Yeah. And as we think back on the series that we studied, part one and two, I Am Come, we talked about a few of the miracles Jesus performed. <laughs> Approximately in the Bible, there were 37 miracles. It could be more, it could be less, because sometimes the miracles were repeated. In Isaiah 3, 5 through 6, it talks about how Jesus, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Yeah. Now this was uh, prophesied in Isaiah about the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. This was a prophetic saying that Jesus, hallelujah, his, that he was going to open the eyes of the blind. Yes. They shall be opened. And that's how we knew Jesus was here. That Jesus is come. How I many can say that he's come? He's the come. I am has come. Oh, how do you know that he's come? Because he lives in you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Doesn't he live in you? Thank you for living in us. Hallelujah. But Isaiah prophesied. And the sixth verse he said, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Yeah. And in this particular verse, if you do your study, it's talking about the millennium. This is what this verse is referring to. Then shall the lame man walk. Hallelujah. You gotta leap. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the dumb, the tongue shall sing, hallelujah. Everything will be free in the millennium with, with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's in our future. It's going to be a glad day. There will be no more sickness, hallelujah, and disease, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It will be an end to it, hallelujah. Come on, someone bless his holy name. Hallelujah. And as we continue to study the scripture, I am come and Jesus fulfilling his purpose. Hallelujah. We see that as the time went, hallelujah, some doubted. Even John the Baptist doubted. Hallelujah. He began to say, and Jesus said in Matthew 11, 4 and 5, with, uh, when he heard that John even doubted, he said to his disciples, Jesus and answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. All right. Praise God. Tell John. Somebody say, Tell John. Tell, tell John. John. Tell anybody that don't know Christ and, 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 and is doubting. Tell them. The blind receive their sight, All right. yeah. and the lame walk, yeah. the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, yeah. the dead are raised up, yeah. and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Yeah. When John got that news, hallelujah, he could carry on his duty. Yeah. He knew that the king had come. Somebody say the king had come. Yeah. When doubt comes in your mind, Remind yourself.
Because we as human beings, there is going to come doubt. But remind yourself. Yes. Say the word, hallelujah. Yes. Fight the devil with the word. How many got that sword in their hand? But the word, hallelujah, we're going to have it in our heart. Hallelujah. Remind the devil that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yes. Hallelujah. Remind the devil that we got the victory. We are not afraid, hallelujah, what man can do unto us. We're not afraid as when we leave our house. We're cautious, but we're not afraid. How he has given us, hallelujah. If you say that, hallelujah, if you mean it in your heart, he has not given us the spirit of fear. He do not want his, his disciples the saints, the people of God, he don't want us to walk around in fear. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what the world is looking like with all that's going on. But can somebody raise your hand? We don't have to walk around in fear. Hallelujah. Somebody say, because we win. Hallelujah. We win. We're going to enjoy this life. Hallelujah. But after this life, thank you, Jesus, we got another life. Thank you, Jesus. So I, I praise God. So on this week, uh, praise God, even as I was saying about John the Baptist and anybody that believed the word, when they hear the word, they believe the word. But you know, we know that Jesus came to fulfill his purpose on earth, and he did. And one scripture, Jesus said, bless are them that seek see the disciples and all the other disciples in Jesus day, they believed because they saw. But look around at your neighbor, hallelujah, because your neighbor, we're all blessed. We haven't seen. Jesus said, blessed are those, hallelujah, that have not seen, but they believe. Anybody believe? I know you do. I got a Facebook audience out there. Do you believe you are blessed? Hallelujah, you are blessed if you believe that Jesus, hallelujah, came to fulfill his purpose. You are blessed, hallelujah. We didn't walk with Jesus, hallelujah, but when I heard the story as a little girl, hallelujah, that's why we encourage you to tell your children about you. When I heard the story, it was interesting enough to keep up with it until I decided to make the Lord Jesus Blessed 
is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hosanna in the high. So that's what Palm Sunday is about. Hallelujah. The palm branches. The waving of the palm branches. Hallelujah. The celebration of the king coming into Jerusalem. I'm so glad Jesus came lonely on that donkey. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Oh, that he was our Lord. He came lonely, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Why, hallelujah? He didn't want to come, hallelujah, riding in an escalade. Hallelujah. He didn't want to come in no being savior. Yes. He's Jesus. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, hallelujah. But he knew this was not his home. He knew he had a purpose to fulfill. Oh, God, and he fulfilled his purpose. Thank you, Jesus. So I bless the Lord. Yes. And the multitude, and this is Jesus, the prophet, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee, yes. and the people in Jerusalem, hallelujah, that were a part of the multitude that followed Jesus and knew who Jesus was, the multitude that was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, uh -huh. the multitude that were a part, they were saying, who is Jesus? But every, somebody say, everybody ought to know. Yeah. Everybody ought to know who yeah. Jesus is. Yes, yeah, so they were saying, who is Jesus? Yeah. But we know, uh, we got to say it in the church, we'll ask, who is Jesus to you? Okay. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus to you? Hallelujah. He's the Lord of Lords. Yeah. He's the King of Kings. Yeah. He's the great I am. Yeah. He's a bridge yeah. over troubled water. Yeah. Jesus announced that one of them 
would betray him, yeah. he still was fulfilling his purpose, yeah. even though he knew one was going to betray him. Yeah. Even on that night, he set up a new audience. After they had finished eat, eating, Jesus introduced a new audience with his followers that his followers would observe, and that's the Lord's Supper. And we do that today. We're still doing the Lord's Supper. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, he gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And you'll find that in Luke. 22, 17 through 20. Jesus gave them the upper room discourse. This contained teaching. All of this was done that final night. This contained teaching on a number of important subjects. He was continuing to teach these disciples up until the very end. After they left the upper room, they began to walk toward Gethsemane with his disciples. Jesus and his 11 disciples left the upper room and headed toward the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. Judas had left earlier in the evening to arrange the betrayal of Jesus. While he was walking along the way, Jesus prayed for a number of things. He was in the garden, he prayed. He withdrew and went a little further from his disciples. He specifically addressed God the Father about the events that he would soon experience. He also prayed for his own disciples as well as those who would someday believe in him. That means he prayed back in the garden. Yeah. Oh, somebody ought to clap their hand. He prayed for you. Right. He prayed for you. He been looking to the future. Hallelujah. He knew you by name. And he prayed for me. I'm glad Jesus prayed for me. Yeah, yeah, too. Yes, Lord. Going a little further, he fell on his face. I've always heard this story about the prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. I remember at Yale Street. Hallelujah. I heard this story. He fell. He went a little further. And he fell on his face and prayed. My father, if it be possible, this is your savior. This is him. He wanted, he wanted Jesus to, God to lift the burden. He said, if it be possible, somebody say, if it be possible. May this cup, may this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned, okay? Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. And he began to question, couldn't you watch with me at least one hour? Wow. And then he went and prayed again. He come back and he said, sleep on and take your rest. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But sometimes we ought to say, when we're going through or have a problem, not as I will. Hallelujah. Sometimes that'll bring the answer. It will. If you put it in the Lord, not as I will. Thank you, Jesus. But as thou wilt. We might not understand. We might be going through. But not as I will, Lord. Thy will be done in my life. Thank you. Just clap our hands for Jesus. <laughs> then on the chron chronology, the rest of Jesus came. Mm -hmm. Jesus was arrested. All of this was on that last night. The traitor Judas arrived with the religious leaders and teachers. I remember being taught that he gave Jesus a kiss. Hallelujah, because there were so many disciples that favored Jesus. And they came and Jesus said, he asked them, why did you come after me like I was a criminal? 
Jesus was arrested and taken away. This humble servant, hallelujah, was arrested, hallelujah, and taken away. He was fulfilling his purpose. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He experienced a number of trials. And even as I was a little girl, I could imagine Jesus going from courthouse to courthouse. Yeah. Have you ever been down to the court? Have you ever been in trouble with the courts? Hallelujah. I went down for a ticket. Hallelujah. It was late at night. And I was going from hall to hall. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus went from high before he stood before the high priest, the Sanhedrin, Pontius Pilate. Herod stood before Herod. Then he was sent back to Pilate. Although Pilate admitted that he found that this is an innocent land. Somebody say innocent. innocent. He still presented him to the crowd to suggest how Jesus would be punished. The crowd said, crucify him. Crucify him. And some in that crowd was the same one that was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, our king. But they turned and they said, crucify him. Hallelujah. In the Amplified Bible, it reads Matthew 27 and 24. So when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather that a riot was breaking out, he took water and washed his hands to ceremonially cleanse himself of guilt in the presence of of the crowd saying, I am innocent. Thank you. Somebody said, thank God for Paula. Paula said, I'm innocent. Yeah. He cleaned his hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. You see to it. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus died by crucifixion. But you know what Jesus said? He died by crucifixion. But he said, I'll rise again. Yeah. And that will bring me to these lyrics. Go ahead and drop the nails in my hands. Well, Laugh at me yeah. where you stand. Well, Go ahead and say that it isn't me. Uh -huh. The day will come when you will see. Because yeah. I'll rise again. Yeah. I'll rise again. There's no power on earth that can hold me down. I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. Go ahead. Mark my name. My love for you. Hallelujah. It remains the same. Go ahead and bury me. But very soon you will see Cause I'll rise again, hallelujah. And no power on earth is gonna keep me down. I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. Clap your hands, he's a rhythm say, hallelujah, hallelujah. According to the New Testament, Jesus was on the cross for six hours. When the soldiers came to break his legs to hasten his death, they found that he had already died. My mother used to tell me the story. She used to say, oh, she was so serious. I was a little girl. And she would say, you know, when they came to break our Savior's legs, she said it was written that not a bone in his body would be broken. Clap your hands, is a God good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was written that the scripture should be fulfilled. And that was in St. John 1936. Not a bone in his body was broken. You know, Jesus spoke his victory. Even before they crucified him, he told his disciples in Mark 31. For he told his disciples and said unto them, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, talking about himself. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke it. Hallelujah. That's why when he went in the 
throne. He had already spoke the victory. Hallelujah. Jesus' words have power. Can no grave hold him down? He said, I'll rise on the third day. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was buried. This is still a chronology of the last day of Jesus' life. He was taken down from the cross by friends. He was anointed with spices and then buried in the tomb of a rich man. This ended the earthly life of Jesus from a human perspective. It looked like everything was over. However, the New Testament recalls the good news that this was not the end. This was not the end. Hallelujah. It was more like the beginning. There are three, two things I want to uh, leave with you. The burden of the cross. Jesus had the burden of the cross. Do you, in Matthew 27 and 46, do you know what the hardest thing about the crucifixion was? And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Hallelujah, that was the hardest thing. God had to forsake Jesus. He can have no part of sin. So Jesus, all the weight of the world, don't ever complain about what you're going through. We might go through another freeze one day, seven days without water, without lights, I mean. Hallelujah, but don't ever complain about what you're going through. Hallelujah, the weight of the world, hallelujah, was a burden on Jesus Christ. That was the hardest thing, but he did it for you because he loved you. No suffering on earth can compare to being forsaken by God. Nothing could be worse than to face God bearing the guilt of sin. So we recognize how committed God is to, to punishing sin. God will punish sin. That's why we have all of these groups telling us it's the end time. Yeah. They're trying to prepare you. God punishes sin unless you made your preparation, unless you accepted Jesus Christ, hallelujah, as your Savior. You won't get in with sin. You have to exchange your sin for Jesus Christ. For at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. So if Jesus didn't spare his own son at the last minute when Jesus cried out, if he didn't spare his own son, what about the one that decided not to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Praise God. There was a rich man Hallelujah. That was the rich man, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Hallelujah. And the rich man, he fair. He was dressed in purple. He had everything. But Lazarus was poor. Hallelujah. Lazarus was desiring to be fed with, from the crumbs of this rich man's table. Hallelujah. It came to pass that the beggar Lazarus died. And he was escorted into the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died, but he lifted up his eyes in heaven. Oh, it was so horrible in heaven in hell. He lifted up his eyes in hell. It was so horrible in hell. He asked Jesus, Can you can you send someone to put just to touch my tongue? Hallelujah. And then he even told Jesus. Can you go back and tell my family they don't want to come here? But Jesus said they got Moses. God said they got Moses and the other prophets. Hallelujah. So we have to prepare ourselves for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. My assignment was to tell you about the burden of the cross. What Jesus went through. Jesus also said emphasize the peace of God. He died for your peace. He told me to mention the peace of God. Hallelujah. He said in John 14, 27 
through 29. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Jesus want us to have the peace, the peace of God. He paid for our peace. Hallelujah. Ye have heard now I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice because I said I go to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it to come to pass, that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. And the, in Philipp, Philippians 4, 7 through 9, and the peace of God, he desired for all his children to recognize what he did on Calvary and have the peace of God. Yeah. There's a peace. Yeah. There is a peace that passes, surpasses all understanding. There is that peace that God is going to keep you yeah. until the day of Christ. Yeah. He's going to go guide your heart if you put your trust in him. Let's clap our hands. Yeah. This is a peace that Jesus has provided for everyone to have experience and enjoy with him as we abide and remain connected to him. He is the vine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, he is the vine. Thank you, Jesus. And all of his blessings flow through the vine. We're going to stay connected to Jesus Christ. Yeah. God's word is true and has real spiritual power. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for accomplishing. Jesus fulfilled his purpose. Yes. I bless the Lord for the I Am Come series. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. He's my Lord and he's my Savior. And he is Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're back in the hands of our bishop. Oh, come on, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap. Oh, Lord, come on, come on, just praise him. Just, just put the eyes open to the Lord. Just praise him right now. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. He has come. He has come. He has fulfilled his promise.
everybody, everybody, everybody. Don't wait till next Sunday. Don't wait till next Sunday. Don't wait till Easter Sunday. Don't wait till Resurrection Sunday. But today, the day that you hear my voice, heart, not your heart. This is all Sunday. Instead of waiting till next Sunday, you can wake up on Resurrection Day, resurrected, saved, and praise of the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody ought to know. I come to you today. I beg of you that if you don't know Jesus in the part of your sins, there is no way to go to heaven. We don't want to go to that other place. But it's a choice. He gives every man volition a mind to choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. And Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What do you say? What do you say you listen to the preacher, Pastor Lloyd G. Coleman, crying in the wilderness today? I want you, you listen to me today, and you know that if Jesus came right now, that you would not be ready to see him in peace. I don't want you to think about it, but I want you to be obedient. And I want you to say after me, even out there in Facebook, in Facebook land as well, is right here in the midst of the sanctuary. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me today. I believe that you went to Calvary and died for the sins of all mankind. Save me today, Lord Jesus. Wash me in your blood and I shall live this life that you have ordained for me to live for eternity. I thank you for saving me this day in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, saints of God. Give the Lord a big hand, praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody. Ought to know who Jesus is. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you on this day. We are so glad for Amen. Our pastor, Amen, coming up in June of this year, which will be her seventh year of pastoring the Miracle House of Prayer. 604 East 38th Street, Houston, Texas. Seven, seven, zero, two, two. Seven years. Seven years. Woo! What a great time. What a great time. Hallelujah. Amen. But we're so grateful. Amen. That the Lord so fit to set Pastor in as pastor. Because if you remember I had I had a fight that's why you gotta listen to the Lord because 
pastors and bishops was doing it all over the land. But I had to go to the Lord and say, now Lord, is, is this for us? Is this what you want me to do? Hallelujah. And the Lord assured me right here in this house standing at this podium where now Pastor Lord Jesus Coma was on the front seat and the Lord said the time is now. That's all I need to hear. Glory to God. I walk in the place of a bishop. She walked in the place of a pastor. When we get home, I walk in the place of the husband. She walk in the place of the wife. Come on. See, God, God has an order. And when the enemy fights, we join together and get him out of our business. Oh, glory to God. My God, my God, my God. Amen. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to next Sunday. Amen. Uh, we're looking forward to every day this week, praise God, and all that we have to do in praying for this week, as we announced previously, uh, amen, we are uh, connected to two homegoings, starting Friday night, uh, Saturday morning, amen, as you all really know, amen, so we want to go over that again, we just have to prepare this week. Amen. And then uh, next Sunday morning uh, for Resurrection Day, we will be right here at 7, uh, uh, amen, at 11 a.m. for our Resurrection Day service. And as we said, none other than the Bishop R.L. Gordon from uh, the Wise Fisherman Church from Dallas, Texas, will be our keynote speaker. And I'm going to try my best to talk my... Uh, Got my daughter, my spiritual daughter, into singing a song, uh, Evangelist Jackie Gordon. I believe she'll do it. Amen. So we're looking forward to next Sunday morning. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And we say to you, Amen. God is doing great things. He keeps on doing great things. He keeps on doing great things. Great things. Like to say to you, this is the Miracle House of Prayer. And until next Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we say to you that we are marching to greater. Come on, give the Lord a praise.